Today we'll talk about an easy step-by-step -step workflow for editing muted tones that still pop here in Lightroom. So let's get into it. Hello friends, my name is Brendan from BeWillCreative.com where we love to talk about photography and photo editing. And in today's tutorial, we're gonna learn an awesome technique for editing those muted colors in Lightroom with a very simple workflow. Now in the most general sense, this technique is broken down into a brightening and then a hue adjustment to basically lift the contrast and then mute down some of the colors by adjusting the saturation and luminance values. So to get a better idea of how it all works, let's hop into Lightroom and see how to do it. So to give your photo a muted look, the first thing that you have to do is brighten your exposure just a little bit and lift some of that contrast. So right now this is a raw photo. So let's do the most basic adjustments and just brighten things up a little so we have a starting point to work with. In this case, I'll just lift up the shadows a bit like so, and then I'll also just increase the exposure just to lift the entire brightness to something a little bit more fitting to what we're wanting to go for. Like I said before, we're gonna wanna favor some brighter exposures for this muted toned look. So this is a great starting point for this image. Now from here, we're gonna go down to our tone curve, and this is where the bulk of our adjustments are gonna take place. Now before we do anything, make sure that you're using the point curve here and not the region curve. So the region curve has all these sliders, and then the point curve, you can actually move the tone curve by manually placing anchor points. So for creating this matte look that we're gonna go for, you need to use this point curve to get started. So what we'll do, very first thing, is click on the shadows point right here and just lift this up. And that's gonna lift the base point of your shadows and give it a more matte look. So notice how as I lift it up, it starts to look more and more gray. And that's just because it's lifting the black point in the photo. So obviously you don't want your image to look like this. So you'll just wanna be sparing and be subtle with how much you lift up the shadows shadows. Now this looks pretty good for this image and it's going to look a little bit different for your photo depending on all the color and exposure values in your image. But once you have that base point set, we're going to add back some contrast so it doesn't look too flat. We can do that by just clicking to add an anchor point in the shadows area and then we'll drag down just a little to bring back some life into those shadows. Now things are looking a little bit too dark, so then we'll go to the mid-tones, click again to add another anchor point, and then drag up slightly like so. So now we have some nice contrast, but it still has that matte effect, which is really important for these muted tones. So turning that on and off, you can see how the contrast is still quite similar, but it does have a softer feel because of that matte look, and that's gonna really help with our color adjustments later on. Now from here, we're gonna go to our region curve, and now we can do some more fine adjustments just by using the slide because I find that the sliders are a little bit easier to work with than the point curve because you don't have to actually add any anchor points. Everything is broken up here for you, so it just makes life a little bit easier. Now, once again, we want to brighten this up a little bit, so I'm going to bring up those lights a touch. I'm gonna to bring up those highlights a bit as well. And in this case, I have a lot of bright areas in the photo because this was taken at sunrise. So I can't go too crazy with this, but you might have a little bit more wiggle room, especially if you have a darker, more shadowy photo that you're working with. Now from there, I'm also gonna bring up the dark slider and that's going to remove some of the contrast in the overall image and make it look a little bit more soft, just like we did before with the point curve. But to make sure that we don't go too overboard with this, I'll just bring down the shadows and add a little bit of contrast back in because you don't wanna have a completely flat image, otherwise it just doesn't look very good. You need a little bit of contrast in there for things to look just right. Now with our tone curve adjustments finished, let's turn that on and off. You can see the big difference that that has already made to flatten out some of the contrast and it gives us a great starting point for moving to to our HSL adjustment. Now the first thing that we're gonna do is actually go to the saturation adjustment right here. And rather than going through all of these sliders, I'm gonna actually use the sample option right here and that way I can just click anywhere in my photo and desaturate just by clicking on the color rather than having to find it in here. So clicking on that, I'm then gonna go pick the most dominant colors in my photo. So in this case, it's clearly blue because there's blue mountains, blue sleeping bag, blue rocks, all that stuff. So I'm gonna click somewhere out in the blue and with that area sampled, I can drag down to desaturate or up to saturate. But since we wanna mute down these colors, we're gonna drag that down to desaturate it just a little bit. Now we don't wanna go too crazy so that it becomes black and white, but you want to get to a point that it is significantly less colored than it was before. So something like that looks good to me. Now to avoid our photo looking too washed out and desaturated, you're gonna to wanna to go and sample some of the less significant colors in your photo and increase the saturation. So in this case, her jacket 
and the rope are two things that work really well as a small piece of the photo that we can add some saturation to. So clicking on our jacket, I'll click and drag up to add some saturation, and I'll click on the rope, click and drag up to add some saturation there as well. So turning our HSL adjustments on and off so far, you can see how we've basically just desaturated the majority of our photo or the most dominant color. So again, these dominant colors are likely gonna be the sky because that takes up a lot of area in your pictures and something in the foreground, it might be some yellows or greens, especially if you're out in the grass or forest or something like that. Now from here, we're gonna to go to our luminance adjustment. And rather than darkening any of our exposures, we're actually going to increase luminance, AKA the brightness of our colors. Once again, rather than adjusting the sliders, we can click on our sample option right here, and then I'll click on the blue area once again, and I'll bring up that luminance just a little bit. So that's gonna once again affect the blue areas of the photo, but this time brighten it just a little to make them look a little bit softer. Now, same thing with her jacket. I'm gonna click on that and I'm gonna bring up the luminance as well just to brighten that up a bit. So the luminance works good for the most dominant colors in your photo once again, but also it works well to brighten anything that's on your subject, such as clothing, for example. Now from here, we can go back to our hue adjustment and start to make our creative color adjustments as we wish, still using that sample option. I'm going to click on that blue once again. Again, it's the dominant color and I can change the hue of that color as I wish. For this example, I think I might favor just a little bit more of a teal color here. And then for her jacket, I might just increase that a bit like that. Now our photo is really coming together and our muted tones are looking pretty good, but our background is looking a little bit too bright. So going up here to our basics panel, I'm just gonna bring down those highlights just a little bit and it's gonna bring back some life into the background here bring down those whites as well. And that just is gonna balance that out so it doesn't look so blown out back there. The last thing that I like to do with these muted tones is adjust the white balance. And for this photo, since it's so blue, I'm actually going to increase it and add some yellow into that photo and balance things out a little bit. This is not only gonna adjust your white balance, but it can also change how some of your colors look in your photo for the better. So the white balance adjustment is another great tool to try when you're editing these muted tones. Looking at our before and after, we started with a dark raw photo that had a lot of contrast. So what we did is we brightened that up, add a nice matte look and took away some of that contrast to get a good starting point for this effect. From there, we went and adjusted the saturation, desaturated all those dominant colors and then brought up the luminance value of those dominant colors to brighten those areas and make them pop a little bit more in your photo. Then from there, we went to the hue adjustment and then we're able to make those stylistic changes as we needed. Now we're gonna go through one more example of editing these muted tones, but if you're loving how this is looking so far, then make sure to hit that like button down below as it really makes a difference to help more people see this tutorial. All right, so let's hop into the next example. For our next example, we have another portrait here. And once again, it's a raw photo that we're working with and it's already a little bit dark. So let's go through the whole process again, but this time just a little bit faster. So the first thing that we need to do is obviously brighten this up a little bit. Since this is really dark, I wanna brighten the whole photo. I'll just bring up that exposure slider a little bit like so. From there, I can increase the shadows if needed as well. And this just gives us a good starting ground for our edit. Now going down to the tone curve, this is where we're gonna do the bulk of our adjustments for this muted tones look. Clicking on our point curve, we're gonna drag up that base point of our shadows to make a matte look. And then we're gonna add back some contrast so things don't look too flat and unappealing. So clicking in the shadows, we'll drag that down. And then clicking on the mid-tones will drag that up and that's gonna add some nice contrast in there while keeping that matte muted look. So turning that on and off, it just softens down some of those shadows in the photo. So now going to the region curve, clicking on this icon right here, we're gonna brighten up some of this. So we're gonna lighten up those highlights and then lift up those darks as well. But since we don't wanna lose all of our contrast, I've lifted up the darks, but I'm gonna bring down the shadows just a little bit. So now we have an image that pops a lot contrast-wise while still having a matte look. From here, we're gonna go down to the HSL adjustment, click on the saturation, because that's what we wanna start with first to desaturate some of those dominant colors. And we want to identify the dominant colors in the photo. In this case, once again, it's a lot of the grays or the teal colors here in the ocean and then the purpley blues in the mountains. So rather than going through all these sliders, once again, I'm gonna use the sample option, click on that right here. Then I'll click on the mountains, drag down to desaturate that. And I don't wanna to go too much because I don't want this photo to be black and white, but I want it to be enough so it's noticeable. So just a little bit 
like this looks really good to me. Now, since this is looking a little bit too desaturated, let's go and find a different color, a secondary smaller color within the photo to saturate, which in this case is her hair. So clicking on her hair, I can bring that up, add some saturation there, and it's gonna bring a little bit more life into the overall photo because then the whole thing doesn't appear desaturated and muted. Once our saturation adjustments are done, we'll click on the luminance adjustment, and once again, with our sample option selected, I'm gonna click on the mountains, and I'm gonna drag that up to add some luminance to that background. So that's gonna to help to brighten up those dominant colors and make that muted look pop a little bit more. Now, once you're happy with this, we're gonna go to the hue adjustment and then we can change the hue as needed, clicking anywhere on your photo to sample. I might just add a little bit of green into the image like that. Now, at this point, the effect is really coming along, but we can make a few more adjustments in our basics panel. Since the highlights are really blown out, I might just drag down that highlights option like so and also bring down the whites just a little bit. From there, we also have the white balance adjustment by adjusting the temperature or tint sliders. For this photo, I'm just gonna increase the warmth just a little bit like that. And then I might even add a bit of green as well. Let's now look at the before and after and see how this version of our edit turned out. Once again, we've brightened up a lot of our photo, we've reduced some of that contrast and we've desaturated all those dominant colors colors that were in the background of our image. But since we didn't want the entire photo to look desaturated, we then went and increased the saturation of the smaller, less predominant colors in the image, which in this case was her hair. That just helps to make your colors pop without the entire photo looking desaturated and a little bit less appealing. So after a brightening, contrast, and color adjustment, you can create this muted tones look in Lightroom really quickly with any image you're working with. Now, if this muted tones effect was way easier than you expected, then make sure to hit that like button down below as it really does make a difference and helps more people see this tutorial and learn this effect for themselves. Now, if you love photo editing, Lightroom, and Photoshop, then you're gonna love the tutorials that I post weekly on this channel, so make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with all of those. Again, my name is Brendan from bewillcreative.com, and I'll catch you back here next time for another new tutorial. See you then.